So you just started Duel Links. You open the game. Hey, there's Yugi. Ah, oh, hey, there's Kaiba. Oh, hey, there's other worlds? How many are there? Starting a new game can be a lot sometimes. There's already tons of great videos out there on how to start a new account. So today, instead of giving you a startup guide, I want to answer some of the frequently asked questions that I see new players have. So if you're a new player, hopefully I can give you some beginner tips that might help you on your Duel Links journey. And if you're a long time player, feel free to stick around and correct me on anything that I got wrong or missed. I'm pretty sure I bookmarked this video so feel free to scrape around to your heart's content. How do I play this game? There's a number of ways you can play this game. And you need to understand that if you're having fun playing it, then your way of playing the game is valid. If it's fun to build Yugi's deck card for card and this guy to death, that's valid. If it's fun to play the most meta deck with a fully optimized deck list and go to tournaments, that's also valid. You should find a way to play the game that's the funnest to you. <sighs> Even you are valid if you're having fun. I guess. What deck should I play? I see people asking this all the time. Unfortunately, this is not a question that anyone other than your heart can answer. If this is your first time playing modern Yu-Gi-Oh, not only do you not know what kind of decks exist, but you also don't know what kind of decks you will like. Do you want to play Dessert Princesses? Lego Dragons? Star Wars of Oz? An anime deck? An anime deck? An anime deck? This abomination? There's tons of decks, all with different playstyles, win rates, and art styles. And the only way you're going to be able to know which one you want is by playing the game. Duel Links front loads a ton of resources when you start, usually enough to build one to two decks, but then after makes you grind for them. I personally recommend waiting to learn what kind of player you are first before deciding on what to invest in. Until then, there's tons of cheap deck lists that will get you far enough into the game that you'll be able to learn what kind of player you are. Resetting boxes. If you've hit the point in your Yu-Gi-Oh journey where you've begun to look at deck lists online, you'll see that a lot of decks go by the old saying, this card is good, let's run more of them, and run most of their core cards at three copies. How do you get three copies of cards when there's only one in each box? The answer is this red button here called reset box. Reset box refills it back up with all the cards it originally had, while you get to keep the ones you already pulled. This is how you get multiple copies of any card. When you hit that button is a very big decision. In general, make sure that at the very least, you have one of each ultra rare that you want three of before hitting that beautiful button. Card Trader Regular Inventory This guy right here is the card trader. He's got cards that you can trade for that circulate every eight hours. However, he also has this little section here called Regular Inventory which is a consistent list of cards that you can trade for at any time. I have seen players play this game for years and never find this section. Let this be your chance to learn it now. Tickets If you open your inbox and click on this button called Exchange Tickets, you're going to get a list of all your card tickets in order of their expiration dates. The only really important thing you need to know about these is they come in two flavors. Picture of blue eyes on them and no picture of blue eyes on them. The ones with a picture of blue eyes on them are called dream tickets and are debatably the most valuable item in this game. They're called dream tickets because any card you could dream of having, so long as your dream isn't from the most recent 5 boxes or so, can be redeemed with this ticket. Want a core ultra rare for a deck you're playing? Dream ticket. Want a super useful stable card that you'll get tons of mileage out of? Dream ticket. Want an Axe Raider? No! God, please, no! No! Don't dream ticket that, please. The not picture of blue eyes ones are just regular tickets. Not all regular tickets are built the same. While you'll never be able to get any box exclusive cards with any of these, some will have larger card pools than others. Some include cards from every event in this game. Some include free giveaway cards you might have missed. Some don't have jack. There are a few useful cards from these depending on the deck you're playing. So make sure you look through all the card pools so you can get everything you want. Half off jam sale. Every couple months or so, Konami will put the old boxes at half gem prices. At the time of this video, old means every box up to here, but they add a box or two every time. 
There are a few nice cards as well as some cheap, relatively okay decks you can pick up in these, so make sure that, if you're pulling from these boxes, that you wait until this sale. Box Chips Box Chips are these little purple circles with eyeballs on them that can also be redeemed for box-exclusive cards. If the half-off gem sale applies to old boxes, box chips apply to ancient ones. 100 box chips can be traded for any card in the first 10 boxes and mini boxes at the time of this video. Don't be fooled though, despite most of the cards being long power crept, there's a couple of really powerful staples hiding in here. So, if you don't want to risk your precious gems on Elemental Hero Tree Guy while trying to get one of the best back row removals in the game, a box chip trade might be for you. Skills One of the key mechanics of this game is the skill system. Each deck can have a skill equipped to it that can be used to help you duel. You need to understand that this game has been out for 7 years. So if you're a little confused on how the skills should work, don't worry. So is Konami. Skills can range from anything from May I offer you a dark monster in these trying times? To this actual paragraph of text here. Most decks have one or a couple optimal skills you can play it with, but if you're experimenting by yourself, there's a couple important things to note. A lot of the more powerful skills have strict deck requirements that need to be met in order to use it. This one needs 10 heroes. This one only lets you run Exceed monsters in your deck. It's important that you make sure to read these requirements carefully, because if not, you won't be able to activate your skill and you're gonna be... CONFUSED. The second thing to note, a lot of generic skills will have a negative drawback attached to them. For example, this one kills your normal summon first turn. This one doesn't let you activate effects first turn. Make sure you read these because if not, you're gonna be... CONFUSED. Finally, skills operate outside the confines of the game, which means that you can't respond to them. Opponent use their skills to fill their pendulum zones? Well, too bad, you can't blow them up before they have a chance to summon with them. Regardless of whether this is a good or bad design choice, it's important to know to avoid being confused. How does the PvP system work? There's two PvP modes in this game, Casual and Ranked. Casual is a very easy explanation. You queue up, get paired with some Ungabunga autoclick player running a level 4 beatstick deck farming for skills. You beat them, and then you question why this mode exists. Ranked's a little more complicated. Ranked mode has 7 ranks, each containing a number of levels within them. Rookie goes 1 to 3, Bronze, Silver, Gold, and Plat all go 1 to 7, and Legend goes 1 to 5. King of Games, or COG as many call it, has only one level, as it is the top. To level up, you have to win a consecutive amount of duels depending on which rank you're in. Rookie only requires 1, Bronze and Silver require 2, Gold 3, Plat 4, and it doesn't get complicated until you hit Legend rank, in which you can also level down, though not lower than Legend 1. Winning 5 duels in Legend will level you up, losing 3 will level you down. Winning 4 and losing 1 and then winning 2 will sometimes level you up. Losing 3, winning 1, losing 2, and Mercury being in retrograde will sometimes level you down. No one's really sure how it works. The simple fix is to just never lose any duels and you don't have to think about it. Why can't players do so much now? If you've stepped into PvP, you may be taken aback by the sheer amount of buttons that players can press during their turn. Duel Links is a little bit of nostalgia bait, and it's definitely targeted at people who have watched the anime or played casually as a kid. I mean, for Christ's sake, look at this ad. What? You don't mean... Force? When Duel Links first started, it was actually perfect for players trying to get back into Yu-Gi-Oh! Characters you know and love, smaller card pool, speed duel format because me no want think card, you know? However, Yu-Gi-Oh! has evolved, and Duel Links has evolved alongside it. And while we're not quite as fast-paced as our Master Duel or TCG counterparts, we get a little closer every day. This can be disheartening for starting players who are trying to jump into PvP, but I offer some possible solutions. One, there's a lot of PvE content in this game that you might just enjoy. It can be your whole game experience, or help ease you into modern-day Yu-Gi-Oh! Two, Konami occasionally has another PvP mode that comes around, called Legacy Duels, which they hopefully make permanent, that has a restricted card pool and character roster that you might just like. And three, I'd recommend giving modern Yu-Gi-Oh! a shot. There can be a lot to learn at first, but the feeling of outplaying someone in a 1v1 is truly unbeatable. Where's Exodia? 
Regular Yugi, not the one possessed by a ghost, has a skill that adds them to your deck, forcing you to run a 25 card deck at the smallest. He automatically unlocks at level 4 and it's currently the only way to get them. Forbidden and Limited List After you've played this game for a little bit, you might notice that some of the cards have numbers on them. No, not those numbers, these ones. The ones in red circles. And when you try to put them in your deck a certain way, Deck Builder Chan goes crazy! These cards are on what's called the Forbidden and Limited List, or just the Ban List, which dictates how many copies are allowed to be put in your deck. This actually trips up a lot of TCG players coming in because our ban list works a little differently than the other ones. In Duel Links, you can have a maximum of 3 limit 3 cards, 2 limit 2 cards, and 1 limit 1 card in your deck. Rather than explain that, let me just show you. Having all of these in your deck at the same time would be fine in the TCG, but in the Duel Links, only these would be acceptable. How come we have to comply with the ban list for PvE content? We don't know either, Chief. The main takeaway here is to make sure you play the game in the way that's funnest to you while making the most of your resources. If you're the kind of player who likes to optimize their gameplay, just try to make sure you enjoy yourself. If you're the kind of player that wants to spend all of your gems on a wacky deck, remember that you only have so many resources over any time frame, so spend wisely. As always, thank you guys for watching, and if you like this more overview style of video, let me know in the comments and I'll make more, because I've got some ideas.